Climate emergency. Climate anxiety. Climate crisis. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. We hear about it all the time, but we don't hear about things getting any better. And we've watched as our homes have faced devastating floods, fires, droughts, and ever-rising temperatures. Just last year, super floods affected 33 million people and caused more than 1,100 deaths in Pakistan. As a generation, we are bearing the consequences of immense negligence by our predecessors. And this crisis is severely and disproportionately affecting women in particular. For women in Pakistan, where access to education and development is already so fraught, this crisis could stunt our development forever. According to one study, Pakistan ranks as the number one hotspot in Asia on a climate and gender inequality index. And that's why climate justice, particularly intergenerational climate justice, is so important. But, but what, what does that, that even mean? mean? Don't worry, we'll tell you. Intergenerational simply means that our present generation works to ensure later generations have a viable future so that their children have a better future. That's normal. That's what we all hope to do. And that's why climate change is so weird and devastating. Because the climate crisis is caused by the present generation stealing our ability to have a livable future. Intergenerational climate justice seeks to correct this so that our future generations, particularly women, have something to live for. We talk to women from different age groups about the impact of climate change, how they're facing it, and what this crisis means to them. Assalamu my name is Hania Imran. I'm an accused climate activist from uh, Islamabad, Pakistan. Se. Or, um, I'm in 19 years few. My name is Luha Siddiqui. I'm a journalist. I cover uh, climate and technology, and I'm 28 years old. So my name is Afia Salam. I'm 66 years old. And uh, I have been a climate journalist for over the past two decades, more than that, in fact. I was 13 years old. At that time, I watched a documentary. I was talking about climate change, that the world will be affected in the future. Mein. Or, um, I was very So, in uh, 2008, I joined IUCN Pakistan as its communications head. And then, when I went out into the field and I saw what kind of impact it's having on the people, on the land, on the you know, biodiversity overall, uh, that's when it uh, became more than a profession and it became, it became like a passion. I think even at 13 years of age, when I saw a documentary, it was a form of climate anxiety or climate doomism that this world is going to be finished. So I've thought a lot about this, and I think what's also really interesting but also terrifying about reporting on climate is the sheer helplessness you feel when you're reporting on climate stories, because there's literally nothing you can do. Guilt? Ma, I mean, right off the bat, I'm willing to admit to that, that we didn't do enough. I'm first of all for making a mess, then not doing enough to clear it up. And after that, I think that ownership of uh, that responsibility to be able to reduce the burden on the generation, which should not have been burdened with the anxiety and the fear. I was in the university, 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 I was in the I think it's important for me to center voices of vulnerable communities and vulnerable populations because they are the ones getting impacted the most, right? Um, and and it's important to recognize that 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 again, as a journalist, the work that I'm producing has an impact, right? Where is it reaching? Is it affecting policy? Is it affecting um, policies that will later later on affect these people, right? So, so it's a very different world from the world that I grew up in and from the world in which my children are growing up in. And our, uh, you know, we had a freer and a more um, hopeful view of the future. The impact of climate change is disproportionate um, on, among, among women. 
a story I was doing two years ago on climate migration from the Indus Delta to Karachi. And I was speaking to a group of women who live in Ibrahim Hedri. How has your sort of livability or your life changed? And she said, you know what, Mosam to badal rai, but I keep telling my I keep telling my my sisters and my daughters to stop having more children. And I said, What do you mean? And she said, they have had so many children that they can no longer afford to feed them. Um, and what if we have to move once again, right? So that trauma of having suddenly moved or having been forcefully displaced from the Delta to Karachi in search of livelihood was still very fresh in her memory um, and was subsequently informing decisions that she was making or was encouraging other people to make, right? And so she said, what if we have to shift again? How are we going to feed our children if they keep having more kids? एक जो बच्ची थी फ्रॉम रिलीजियस माइनॉरिटी हिंदू गर्ल दैट गॉट रेप्ड बिकॉज उसे राशन के लिए एक बंदे ने उसे कहा कि मैं राशन मैं दूंगा फ्लड्स के टाइम पे एज अ गर्ल एज ए ह्यूमन बीइंग आपके जो राइट्स हैं वो इन क्राइसिस सिचुएशंस में वायलेट हो जाते हैं और बहुत बुरी तरीके से वायलेट होते हैं क्लाइमेट इंड्यूस्ड माइग्रेशन ब्रिंग्स इट्स ओन इंटेंसिटीज ऑफ वल्नरेबिलिटीज बिकॉज़ दे आर इन अ स्पेस नॉट ऑफ देयर ओन चॉइस द स्पेस वेयर दे कुड हैव रिटर्न टू इज नो लॉन्गर देयर from the floods that took place this year were what did we learn what did pakistan learn from what happened in 20 2010 um did did the country learn anything what policies or what mechanisms were put in place to prevent something like this from occurring and i think a really great example is this this video that had gone viral on twitter when the first brick was laid did anybody raise their voice and say hey this area is prone to flooding maybe we shouldn't be building a hotel right on the banks of the river yes they need to drive the narrative they need to have the policy they need to take those right decisions and which are still not being taken the promises are being made the promises are not being kept pakistanis are facing the consequences of delayed and inadequate policies but There is still time to act and the first step in acting is to center those who have suffered the most from climate catastrophes our women that means pursuing equity by bringing these women to the forefront of our policy decisions listening to their experiences and empowering indigenous female perspectives without that pakistan will never be able to sufficiently protect us and achieve a sustainable future This Women's Day, we don't just embrace equity, we demand it.